we got lots more ahead, including the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and creator of the 1619 Project, Nicole Hannah-Jones. She joins me live in studio on the latest developments underscoring the hypocrisy surrounding the former Harvard president, Claudine Gay's ouster from the institution. Stay with us. Today, in a continuation of the Ivy League plagiarism story we've been following, we saw an apology. It was sincere, and it's one from which we can all learn something. It reads in part, quote, There are four paragraphs in my 330-page PhD dissertation where I omitted quotation marks for certain work that I used. For each of the four paragraphs in question, I properly credited the origin source's authors with references at the end of each subject's paragraph and in the detailed bibliography end pages of the dissertation. In these four paragraphs, however, I did not place the subject language in quotation marks, which would be the proper approach for crediting the work. I regret and apologize for these errors, end quote. Facing a wave of plagiarism allegations, a senior and accomplished academic has apologized, began reviewing her work, and proactively launched the process of seeking corrections. The academic in question here is Neri Oxman, an architect and an artist who was also a tenured professor at Massachusetts Institute of Technology from 2017 until 2021. The apology came after the Business Insider magazine uncovered multiple sections of her 2010 dissertation where she lifted entire chunks of writing from other scholars without proper quotation or attribution. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who is Neri Oxman and why should I care? Well, what Neri Oxman did happened more often than you might think in academia, especially if the academic is using technical language. She has apologized, as she should have. She is fixing it, as she should. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that Neri Oxman isn't some obscure academic. She's the wife of Bill Ackman, the billionaire hedge fund manager and Harvard donor who just joined forces with anti-liberal crusader Chris Rufo to oust the Harvard president Claudine Gay over literally the exact same thing. Last month, when Harvard decided against removing Gay as president following Congresswoman Elise Stefanik's bad faith questions about anti-Semitism on campus, a coalition of mostly conservative men helmed by Rufo and aided heavily by Ackman and his million followers on X launched a public campaign against Gay. They reportedly accused her of plagiarism, repeatedly. And like Oxman did, Gay asked her university to investigate her work, identified errors of a substantially similar type. Then she apologized and sought corrections. And when they would not satisfy her detractors, including Bill Ackman, she resigned as president. But that is not enough for Rufo or Ackman. For some reason, Gay is different from Neri Oxman. In a post on X, Ackman did not question his wife's body of work. He immediately came to her defense, writing, quote, Part of what makes Neri human is that she makes mistakes, owns them, and apologizes when appropriate, end quote. For Oxman, her apologies, her ownership of her mistakes, make her human. For Claudine Gay, the former black president of Harvard, such accommodation, such empathy are not available. Because also today, Rufo began questioning the data Gay used in her work. And Ackman, he repeated calls for Gay to be fired from Harvard altogether. This way of doing business still hasn't ended. This story is not over. Tonight, new information here. Business Insider is reporting what it says are more examples of plagiarism in Neri Oxman's work, including a passage of her dissertation that appears lifted directly from Wikipedia. So what's Bill Ackman's response tonight? He is saying, we're coming for you. We're coming for all of you. In another post on X, he wrote, quote, This experience has inspired me to save all news organizations from the trouble of doing plagiarism reviews. We will begin with a review of the work of all current MIT faculty members, President Kornbluth, other officers of the corporation, and its board members for plagiarism, end quote. We will share our findings in the public domain as they are completed in the spirit of transparency. So that's where we are now weaponizing accusations of plagiarism against academics you don't like. Not your wife, but the other ones. 
If you, like Claudine Gay, write things that offend the sensibilities of people like Bill Ackman, if he finds your appointment offensive, he will come for you. Groups of people like Rufo, like Ackman, will target you. They will find and exaggerate mistakes that you have made, and they will weaponize them. And you will not get their empathy, and you will not get their sympathy for your humanity if you make mistakes. We've seen this story before. We've seen it recently. The Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Nicole Hannah-Jones has experienced it firsthand, and she joins me next. In 2021, Nicole Hannah-Jones was going to make history. Two years after launching the 1619 Project at the New York Times, where she placed the contributions of black Americans at the center of this country's history, and one year after she won the Pulitzer Prize for her work, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill announced that it was hiring Nicole Hannah-Jones. She was going to be the first black scholar appointed to be a so-called night chair. Now, historically, that position comes with tenure but not for Hannah Jones. When right-wing opponents and a top donor at the university, the man that UNC's School of Journalism is named after, objected to Hannah Jones's appointment, her tenure was blocked. It took mass protests for the university to decide to grant her tenure, but by that time, she had chosen instead to join the faculty of Howard University, one of the country's top historically black colleges and universities. This week, Hannah Jones is reminding people of what happened to her because it looks a lot like what happened to now former Harvard president Claudine Gay. Joining me now is Nicole Hannah-Jones, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter at the New York Times Magazine, creator of the 1619 Project and the Knight Chair in Race and Journalism at Howard University. Uh, as you point out, Nicole, we, we never meet on good occasions. That's right. uh, but this one's important for people to understand because a lot of Americans have been hoodwinked. They think uh, Claudine Gay is out uh, because she said something anti-Semitic, which she didn't. They think Claudine Gay's out because she plagiarized. Uh, she had some inconsistencies in her citations, uh, which she reviewed and asked for corrections to, and Harvard determined that that was not, uh, that, that the proper uh, steps were taken. She's out because they came for her. She's out because a very organized group of people, very similar to the people who came for you, came for her. Yes, absolutely. You know, one, let me just say, um, my heart is really with uh, Dr. Gay. Um, this is a woman who had a stellar academic career and has had her reputation sullied strictly for political reasons. I know yes, exactly you know what, that looks what like. that's like. Um, this is not about plagiarism. This is not about anti-Semitism. This is about, um, as you said, an extremely well-organized propaganda campaign from the right um, to make anyone black in a high position of power seem like a, a diversity hire, a, an unqualified affirmative action hire. This is the next iteration of the anti-critical race theory campaign that led to the banning of books and curricula that's now trying to target people of color in leadership positions and um, do a great deal of damage to the racial progress that has been made. And in fact, it's it's the same people, the, the same guy, Chris Rufo, who popularized uh, CRT incorrectly, who also had Donald Trump uh, write, you know, edicts about what it should be. The same people who wanted to get 1619 out of the vernacular and started the hashtag 1776. It's the same thing. It's this movement that says some of you have come too far and we're, we're, we're taking it back now. Absolutely. I mean, just look at the language that's being used. So one, as we were discussing, um, Chris Rufo is not even trying to camouflage what he's Correct. doing. Correct. He, he puts it all out on social lays media. lays the playbook yeah. out. He says, this is what we're going to do. And then he does it. Um, what is disheartening is how he's able to lay out the playbook and be so successful. What happened with Claudine Gay? Anyone who's ever written a long form paper mm -hmm. with, that goes through multiple revisions knows that you can make citation errors. Yep. Um, you've rewritten the same sentence 12 times and eventually the quotations fall off or sometimes you don't cite it in the right place. Even her- It happens commonly. It happens all the time, yeah. um, which 
we've seen. It happens yes. even with some of the people who have made the accusations yes. um, or who are related to some of the people who've made the accusations to Dr. Gay. But we're in a landscape now where because this is about politics and not really concerns about plagiarism, that you can't make mistakes. You right. cannot make an error. And especially and as a black woman. Issue. That's the bigger issue because there are black women who enjoy positions of authority in this country in a way that hasn't been done historically right. because we as a society realized that that was an important thing to do who are now, they got targets on them. That's right. Every black woman in a position of authority in this country, they're going to wonder, did you, did you really get that job properly or, or were you a diversity hire or did you get a leg up because you're black? Yes, and this is this is what I say. This is this is how it is impossible for black women to win um, um, in this moment that we're in. Because if you're not successful, then they say you were lazy, you didn't work hard enough. Um, if you are successful, they say that you didn't deserve it, and they will put you under a, a level of scrutiny that, frankly, none of us would be able to withstand. I know what that feels like. Um, if you go through every single word, if you parse every single, you know, where's the comma? Where are the quotation marks? I don't think anyone's work with, with stand up to that scrutiny. Um, but we also, therefore, give grace and say, OK, you made an error. This you is how you correct, correct that it. Error. All the universities That's have a right. system for that, that you find, you ask for a review, you get the review. But here's something interesting. So so this happens now to Bill Ackman's wife. Yes. Bill Ackman's been on a campaign. His wife gets found to have done some stuff. It's actually more egregious than, than what uh, anything Claudine Gay was accused of doing. That said, he said she's a human. She makes mistakes, yes. which I think is a reasonable answer. And I think we should give Bill Ackman's wife the grace of the fact that she's a human who made a mistake. But because this has been dug up, now he's saying we're coming for all of you. He's, he's, going to, he's got money, so he's going to fund uh, a review of every academic at MIT's uh, research. This didn't happen before there were women and people of color in power. People could just get away with whatever they could get away with. We weren't really in a meritocracy because a whole bunch of people were left out of that discussion. Absolutely. I mean, what we're seeing is what we know has always been the case. White men get the benefit of the doubt. They get the presumption that they are qualified, that they are the most qualified. A person of color, and particularly a woman of color, particularly a black woman, the presumption is that she is not, and that she is uh, deserving of this extra scrutiny because she shouldn't be in that position. Let me tell you, in, in the 380 years that Harvard has existed, um, Claudine Gay is not the first black woman because she was the first black woman who was qualified. Mm -hmm. She was the first black woman who had an equal chance to actually yeah. um, uh, be put into that position. And now she has the shortest tenure of anyone in that position. That is not about Claudine Gay and her qualifications. That is about a society that is unprepared to see a black woman at, at kind of the citadel of American uh, academic power. So the, we've been talking about this all week. The reason I wanted to talk to you is because I've always admired your personal courage in this. You have come under attack on social media, in public, from the president of the United States, from Christopher Rufo, from these same powers. And you're not giving up. You, you don't stop. You created a new reality for yourself. So what's your inspirational message right now? Because for a lot of people in America, they're scared tonight mm. that, that the Ackmans and the Rufos of the world will come for them too. Well, I, re I really have two things to say. Um, I had an institution that supported me no matter what the attacks were, and that means a lot. Um, originally, Harvard supported Claudine Gay, then they didn't. Institutions are going to have to uh, show some courage in these moments because what you do when you fold in the face of this is then you only uh, encourage more of it to happen. Yes. They're going to say, oh, we, as they did, you we did. got her scalp. Yeah. So now we're One going to down, come for down. more people. That's what they, they were tweeting. Right. So institutions like Harvard, you have power. Use your power. Don't sell out this woman or sell out others when you know that these are political attacks. And the other thing I'll say is uh, we come from folks who have always had to fight. I understand um, that being in this positions that I'm in, are, uh, it's a tremendous privilege. I'm going to keep fighting. And all of us, if, if we band together against this, we will win because we're right, because we have ethics, we have morals, we have scruples, we have humanity. Um, so we just, we cannot give up in this moment and we can't be weak. Thank you for everything you've done, Nicole. Good to see you as always. Thank you always. Nicole Hannah-Jones is the night chair in uh, race and uh, journalism at Howard University. All right. Well